In the grim darkness of the future, there is only war and massive fucking muscle. But what if I told you you too could become a space marine with strength to crush your enemies and the power to reshape your body to godlike proportions? Well, today we'll break down how you can build muscle like one of these genetically enhanced elites. Let's get straight into it. If you don't know who I am, I'm Coach Colton. I help a lot of bodybuilders and other people in this world get to the most jacked physiques of their lifetime. Yes, sometimes that is using performance enhancing drugs, other times that is doing it completely natural. In this video, I'm gonna discuss all of the tools that you might be able to use to leverage your physique. I must say, as a disclosure, I am not a doctor. This is not medical advice. This is just some anecdotal experience. Let's dive right in. Part of what makes a space marine such a powerhouse is their biscopia, an organ that dramatically boosts muscle growth by ramping up hormonal production, testosterone being one of the most crucial of all. For us, the biscopia represents how we can naturally and synthetically optimize our hormone levels for maximal muscle growth. Growth. Look, your hormones are key to building massive and dense muscles. If you're not living the life that you need to to have optimized hormones, you simply will not build the muscle required to be a massive human being. Here are the key critical factors that will enhance your natural testosterone and even growth hormone output. One, sleeping. And I think this is chronically the biggest issue within our modern population of Gen Zs and whatever. <laughs> I don't want to get into that conversation, but our world is not great with our sleeping patterns. We sleep chronically less than we ever have before in human history. Sleeping seven to nine hours a night can boost your testosterone and growth hormone radically and massively improve how your body partitions food the following day. So for instance, if I get eight hours of sleep and I eat a ton of food the following day, that food is much better gonna serve me in building muscle than it would if I hadn't had as much sleep. And testosterone and growth hormone, both in females and males, are massive and critical components of building muscle. Without them, you surely just won't build the muscle needed to repair your gains after you've spent them doing some horrible things to tear in it. <laughs> Diets are absolutely critical as well. This is another big component that most people will mess up. You need to be consuming about a gram of protein per pound of your own body weight or desired body weight if you're currently a little bit overweight. Then the other bits of food doesn't really matter a whole lot. You do wanna make sure that you're not eating a ton of fats. Something like 60 to 50 grams for most meals as a, a general rule of thumb is pretty good. And then filling in the rest with carbohydrates is generally a great idea, especially if you're focusing on anaerobic workouts or weightlifting. Lifting. You want these foods to be concentrated mostly with whole foods in animal foods, not some packaged bullshit. You will want to focus on animal meats that are really high quality. Things like wild caught salmon, beef, bison, and sure, you can throw some chicken in, but just understand it's not very nutritious. So the whole chicken, broccoli, and rice isn't super ideal. And then filling in your carbohydrates with rice is just fine, but you can also use many different sources. I also even recommend dairy products to get calcium in the human body because surprisingly, a lot of people who are worried about muscle growth don't consume dairy for some reason because they think it's this horrible thing. And because of that, they're mostly deficient in calcium. We break the synaptic connection. They'd scatter like rats. And if you're wrong, if it's not there, I cannot afford to throw men after a hunch. Give me two squads, three space marines. That's all I can spare. Brief them immediately. The next thing is stress management. Critically important. I like to use a lot of different methods here. Of course, sleep being one of those methods, but you can also use various supplements. Ashwagandha, KSM66 is something you've all probably heard about. Dosing that around your bedtime is a beautiful idea to lower cortisol. While that is not the only indication of physiological stress, it does help a lot when it comes to management of hormonal capacity. The other thing you can use is Emodin, which is another product that does really impressively reduce cortisol. I would say better than even ashwagandha does. It is a little bit more pricey, but it's out there on the market and you can find it just about anywhere. The best next thing is to quite literally just incorporate stress reducing activities. Now, I know we want to be space marines, but we can't live the stressful space marine lifestyle. So we need to incorporate some things that can give us a bit of balance after we've come home from battle. Walking in the light, especially in the morning or maybe even before the sun sets is a beautiful idea, trying to get as much fresh air as you can. Writing or journaling can also be another really beneficial way of doing this. I find just writing my thoughts out on a piece of paper can be a really relaxing method to de-stress or decompress 
when things are really, really heavy. Now, tip number two is just the raw deal. This is no joke, and I'm telling you guys straight in. For those looking to go beyond natural limits and truly push to the level of a space marine, compounds like testosterone and other derivatives of testosterone become increasingly necessary to build a copious amount of muscle. So here's a really quick breakdown, but I recommend if you're actually interested in any of this, again, look at the videos on my channel. I have tons of videos going through this exact thing. But testosterone would be your base steroid to increase muscle mass as it is the endogenously produced hormone that we do have and our body recognizes it. So when you inject it exogenously, there's really not too much bad that can happen, of course, unless you push the doses exorbitantly high. It will increase recovery speed, it will increase muscle growth, and a lot more than that. But you have to watch the videos I have on this channel to learn a bit more. Then growth hormone as a secondary agent, which is also a biological equivalent hormone or peptide. Now, when you inject it, it's not technically the biologically equivalent hormone, but it is at least close to the peptide that our body does produce. You will need to understand that this is a very, very powerful peptide. When growth hormone enters the body, it converts into IGF-1 through the liver, and that IGF-1 insulin-like growth factor will cause rapid muscle accumulation in all parts of your body. This is something that is extremely desirable for anyone who wants to grow muscle very quickly and do it safer than abusing a ton of androgens, which will delegate much worse to poor health. While this is important context to provide because most of the fitness industry is taking some sort of performance enhancing drug, even if they claim natural, this information does come with side effects. And the space Marines would tell you this themselves. They are not normal people. You can be consuming these things with risks of liver damage, kidney dysfunction, long-term cardiovascular strain and cognitive declines, which are not super favorable, especially if you do this stuff inappropriately or incorrectly. Always seek out healthcare when it is needed and make sure you reach out to a professional to actually learn how to do this stuff. That way you can safely become your own version of a space marine. Space Marines actually have an olytic kidney, allowing them to detoxify their blood and survive harsh environments. And they don't just pack on muscle, they have insane endurance. And we can tap into this concept by focusing on metabolic conditioning and allowing your body to clean out those metabolic byproducts of the day-to-day -day life. High intensity cardio is gonna be your best friend here. It both decreases the amount of time that you spend on any piece of cardio equipment, and it is slightly anaerobic and can lend itself to helping you build more muscle, as well as sprints and and other various activities that align with sprint-like activity will boost your natural testosterone production. Things like battle, rope, swinging, sled pushing, assault bike going, these will boost your cardiovascular health, especially if you do it in an interval capacity, and in doing so, also improve your workout ability. When you're actually training with weights, you'll find that those weights do become easier to move for longer periods of time with better cardiovascular health. You want short, intense bursts of activity with prolonged periods of rests, and then repeating that several times, multiple times a week. This conditioning will massively help you in the gym to build muscle, but it'll also keep you healthy outside of the gym. And like I said, help your body to facilitate the cleaning process, which is getting rid of the metabolites that you create from exercise. Next up is the Osmodula, which reinforces the bone of the space brain, making them virtually unbreakable. While we may not have access to such enhancements, we can build a version of our own unbreakable bones with resistance training and proper nutrition. To enhance bones, strength and skeletal muscle, which will create better integrity for bone strength, you're going to want to resistance train. This is something we often talk about and something that is massively critical to the idea of building muscle. Of course, you're going to want to lift heavy on movements that are generally quite shearing to your bones. Things like deadlifts, squat patterns, and pressing patterns are beautiful to start with. If someone is just starting out in the gym, I would advise them to do one of each kind of movement, basically three days a week, pushing, pressing, and pulling, if you can do these movements with pretty heavy weights, training close to proximal failure of your muscles, you're gonna build some serious tissue and strengthen your bones beyond what normal people can even handle. We can make it! Keep going! Space Marine's Lyman's ear grants them enhanced balance and reflexes crucial for the heat of battle. 
for us, this translates into agility and coordination to enhance our strength both in a functional capacity and an explosive capacity. Now, what I'm about to suggest to you goes counter to what most people would suggest when trying to build the most muscle possible, but we're not just trying to be jacked meat sticks walking around that are incapable of bending over to grab their own shoelaces. We want to be functional and able to kick ass when we need to do so. And to do this, what I seriously suggest is that on the days you are not weight training or even on the days that you are to prevent the down regulation in your body's ability to move in full capacity, you'll want to perform some activities that are outside of your norm. For me, that is fighting in Muay Thai. I like to fight in Muay Thai. It's a huge challenge, but it's also a cognitive challenge. My body has to learn new movements every time I train that are beyond just a bench press or a pull up. We don't want you to be just raw strength. We also want you to have dexterity and be able to use that strength in certain matters. Things like basketball, football, fighting sports like jujitsu, Muay Thai, kickboxing, or boxing. All of these things are phenomenal ways to create more dexterity within your body as well as improve your physique even further by increasing the calorie demands of your day. don't just rely on muscle and skill, their preometer allows them to digest almost any type of food and extract maximal nutrients. While we don't need to eat our battlefield rations, we do need to feel our bodies for proper growth. Focusing on high protein meals throughout the day is absolutely critical. You of course want to balance healthy fats and carbohydrates to sustain energy, but to grow like a space marine, we really do need to aim for about 1 to 1.2 grams of protein per pound of body weight and ensure you're eating in a slight calorie surplus. A properly fueled body body is a body that grows. If you're trying to reduce your calorie intake to lose weight, you can rest assured that you're not going to build ample amounts of muscle. You must be eating in a calorie surplus to get the effects that you're looking for here. You can find this easily by eating the amount of calories you normally do, but tracking it. Once you figure out how many calories you're eating on a normal daily basis, you can then weigh yourself and see on a week to week basis, does your body weight go up or down? If it stays neutral, you're at your maintenance calories. If it goes up, you're eating in a caloric surplus. If it goes down, you're definitely eating in a caloric deficit. Now, for most of you, this means you'll want to eat in a caloric surplus if you're losing weight. But for some of you who might have a higher body fat index, you'll definitely want to consider losing weight and building muscle at the same time, which is just about the only kind of person that that is possible with. A space marine's brain is also equipped with a catalepsy and node, which allows them to go days without sleeping and maintain mental clarity. While we do need rest, and I've touched on this really importantly, building muscle also requires mental toughness, and a mind-muscle connection is a real and important factor that helps you reach your potential. We need to develop focus and discipline to really get to the next level. When training, while it might be a seemingly good idea, idea to call upon the rage, sadness, or whatever other emotion you walk into the gym with, what's more beneficial for you is to train in a cerebral capacity, to think about the movements that you're going to perform and how you're going to perform them and at what weights you're going to perform them before you do, and then as you're performing the movement, thinking about what you're actually trying to accomplish with it. Is that training your lat? Is it training your bicep? Is it training your tricep? And are you feeling it as you're moving through the range of motion? And hopefully, as you're moving through the range of motion, you're doing it appropriately. Now this kind of discipline is really hard to achieve because it requires that you slow down in your training, you be more thoughtful. A lot of people want to slam pre-workout and just run into the gym and get things done by moving weights from point A to point B. But if you can be really considerate of how you move those weights and actually consider critically what those weights are going to do for you in the long run, you might just be a lot more successful at building a ton of muscle mass. So while we might not have the genetic enhancements that a space marine has, nor the mechanical components that build their physique the way it is, we can still live and train and eat like one. By focusing on our strength, endurance, nutrition, and lifestyle factors, it would actually be surprisingly easy to build a copious amount of muscle just like a space marine, and you dribble in a little bit of anabolic steroids and maybe some growth hormone, you're gonna get to a massive 
human-sized proportion, something that the emperor himself would be quite proud with. Like, comment, and subscribe for more details on how to build the most amount of muscle and stay as healthy as humanly possible, as well as much more content related to bodybuilding or fitness in some capacity. I really do suggest, if you're interested in anything I just said, to watch more of my videos as I do extrapolate and embellish these thoughts way deeper than I did here. I'll see you in the next video.